Hey, what's up? My name is Adrian Jensen from Production Crate. And I am Chris Kelly, also with ProductionCrate.com. Yeah, you are. I have the .com in case people didn't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of domains out there. You gotta, <laughs> Let's jump into you it. You gotta watch out. <laughs> All right, today we're gonna show you how to use our new Ember Particle Assets, as well as some of the new features in Trap Code Particular 5 to burn away some text or a logo. And if you're a Production Crate Pro member, check out the description and find a download link to this project. All you need to do is open up the underscore text composition and change the text or drop in your own artwork or logo and you are done. We did it for you. Before we start disintegrating, we need something to disintegrate. Whoa. Make true. a new comp and either type some text or drag in your logo. Make sure to give this comp a good name because we're going to be using it a few times and we want to be able to find it. Now here's a hot tip. If Ooh. you add an underscore to the beginning of your comp name, this will make it appear at the top of the project panel, making it easier to find. All right, so next we need to put together a transition comp we can use to erode away our text or logo. We're gonna put together a bunch of layers to make a custom texture. You can probably guess that for our first layer, we're gonna make a new solid and apply a fractal noise, and you'd be right. But an alternative to this would be to use an actual texture. But where can I get one? Well, let's jump right on over to graphicsgrade.com and navigate to the textures section. You can see a few sections here that could work. Dirt and concrete could be good, but I think that rust might be exactly what we need for this effect. We like this high contrast one, so let's click on that to take a look at it. And by looking at this bottom part here, you can quickly verify that it does tile seamlessly, and that's good. <laughs> so let's go ahead and download that and bring that into our comp. We're gonna scale that down and add a motion tile. Now that we can see that the tiling is a little bit obvious, but if we just rotate it slightly, believe it or not, that's gonna help. We'll also tint it black and white, and now we can see that the contrast here might be an issue. It looks cool, but it might be an issue. It's looking very two-tone right now, but if we turn down the opacity, we can mix it with our fractal noise layer below, and that's gonna give us a greater amount of usable data while also maintaining the nice organic nature of using this real texture. So now we've got the best of both worlds. Since we're gonna want our text to look like it's flaking away, kind of like chipped paint, we want to add some flakiness to this texture as well. We can do that by creating a new solid with a cell pattern effect. Let's change the pattern type to plates, turn the sharpness down low and turn the size down pretty low as well. We'll turn it down until the cells are roughly the size that we'd want them to be for our, our paint chips and rust flakes to be. Then all we need to do is just put that on an overlay transfer mode and we'll adjust the opacity until we have the right amount of flakiness. Any of these layers can be adjusted later as well if we don't nail our ratios on the first attempt. It's all good. The next thing we need is a new solid with a gradient ramp effect running from left to right. And just like before, we put that on an overlay transfer mode to blend it with our existing layers. And this is just going to help encourage our transition to move from left to right rather than just burning away all at once. Obviously, if you want yours to burn away all at once, don't do this, or you can make it any direction you want, even radial if you want. Now to actually turn this texture into a transition, add a new adjustment layer, apply an exposure and a levels effect. On the levels, just bring in the black and white points a little bit to add some contrast, and then on the exposure, we can animate it over time so that our transition goes from black to white. Next, we grab the transition comp as well as our text comp, and we drag them both into a new comp. We're gonna call this one text e road. We'll tell our text layer to use the transition comp as a luma inverted mat. Also duplicate the text transition. We're going to apply a CC glass effect to the text itself using the top that's the duplicate we just made transition as the bump map. This is going to give us a nice texture where the text starts to flake away. We can also put a tint on the top transition itself to make the black point a little bit more of a dark brown and we can put that on a color burn transfer mode and that's going to add some charring to the edges. We can also move the color burn layer back a little 
bit so that the burns and the highlights start showing up slightly before the text actually starts to fade away. And since the CC glass layer is tied to this top layer, moving it is gonna affect that as well. Go ahead and grab that text erode comp, drag it into a new comp and duplicate it. Set the bottom layer to use the top layer as an alpha inverted oh. mat. Alpha inverted mat. Uh, cool. Drag it forward a little bit. Make an adjustment layer and apply a levels effect to set the channels to alpha and just crush the alpha in. You don't really want to see any see-through pixels here. Also, we can add a simple choker to get rid of all those teeny tiny bits because we don't need those emitting any particles. This is going to be our emitter, so let's name the comp accordingly. That's right, stay organized. Now let's grab our text erode comp and our emitter comp and drag them into a new comp. This is gonna be our main comp. We finally made it. <laughs> Turn the emitter, are you, are you happy now, dad? <laughs> Turn the emitter into a 3D layer so Particular can understand it. We should probably go ahead and jump over to Footage Crate and download our particles as well. We've got a bunch of these looping ember particles. These loop perfectly and they are in a 240 by 240 resolution. So they're not gonna slow you down if you wanna use them as sprites in particular. And that's exactly what we want. For some reason, if you do need them in HD, we have those available for you as well. There's a bunch of variations, but we're just gonna grab our four favorites and we're gonna bring those into the comp as well and we're gonna poke all their eyes out poke 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 <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably want a background too so let's find one on graphics crate this rocky texture out here should work great we'll just use a motion tile to shrink it down and tile it add a cc vignette to darken the edges and an exposure to darken the whole thing down so it doesn't distract from our main effect Let's add a new solid. Welcome to the world, new solid. <laughs> We're gonna drop it under our text erode layer and apply particular to it. This is gonna be our main layer of embers. The emitter type should be set to layer and under the layer emitter menu, we're gonna select our emitter comp. We don't want our emitter size Z to be super thick because then it won't really appear to be in the same shape as our text, but we actually do need a small amount of thickness so that our shading will work. I know we haven't gotten to shading yet, but we will, it's at the end. Let's go with maybe about 10. We're also gonna go with about 4,000 particles per second here. And that sounds like a lot, but when using layer emitters, you tend to need more. The direction should be directional and we'll change the Y direction to 90. This means that the particles are gonna fly to the right. We're gonna put our velocity up to 1000, but then we're gonna open up this velocity over life tab here. And then we wanna make our curve to look something like this. This means that after the particles are born, they'll pretty much sit still for a little bit before shooting off into space. Whoa. You don't really want this curve to be very smooth or gradual, a somewhat sharp movement makes more sense in this situation. Moving on to the particles themselves, we're actually putting our life pretty high at 20 with some randomness of 50%. The particle type should be a sprite and opening up the sprite controls, we can select one of our ember particle layers. Just pick one of them for now. We'll be adding in the others later. The time sampling is fine at random loop and you can change the size to taste. Ours is at 10 with a randomness of 50 and under the size over life, we're gonna draw a curve that allows them to grow on real quick and then fade out slowly. Having the particles shrink over their life actually does make sense because they're on fire, so they should be burning away. Huh. Opening up rotation, we want the random rotation up all the way. Whoa. We could turn on some orient to motion to possibly get more of a realistic look. This will make the particles tumble along a little depending on the direction of their motion. Yeah, orient to motion is a percentage now. It's not just on or off. I like that. That's cool, yeah. Yeah. Under environment, we want some negative gravity to make the particles float up. Negative 30 worked for us. Adding some wind in the X direction will help the particles move to the right. We added in some air turbulence as well, turning the effect position up to 50 and turning up the move with wind value as well. Under physics simulations, we enabled meander <laughs> and this just lets the particle meander. kind of wander around a bit. Unrelated to the physics, it just adds a bit of randomness. This is actually based off of Adrian's movement throughout the office over a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I kind of have been. <laughs> yeah. Meandering. Under lighting, we'll want to open up the shadow lits tab and enable the shadow lits and then play with those values until we start seeing the kind of depth that we want. Once we're pretty sure our particle settings are perfect, we can add in our other textures. This step is kind of 
of a pain in the butt to be honest, but here we go. We go all the way back to the emitter and under particles per second, we divide it by the number of textures we want to use. We downloaded four, so 4,000 divided by four is 1,000. That's easy math. Then at the very top of the plugin, there's a big fat blue button labeled designer. Click that to open up the designer window and down here in the bottom left corner, we can duplicate the system until we have four identical systems. Click apply to close the window. All right, now under show systems, you can see you have four different systems. We just need to go through each of them and change the random seed as well as the particle texture. The thing that makes this a pain to do is that there are so many options in this plugin now that it takes forever to find the ones that you need. Kind of a double-edged sword. What's up? Kind of a double-edged sword, huh? It, it really is. These <laughs> The features are awesome, but if you're used to the old version, everything is differently placed than it was before. But eventually we're able to finish our particle effect and it does look much better now. Nice. You know, the key to achieving depth in After Effects is to use your layers. So let's layer up our particles. Duplicate the main embers layer and move it up above the text layer. And we can call this one top embers. On this one, we can delete the extra systems and use just the one, that's fine. Change the random seed and open up the particle settings. We want these particles to fly away faster. So an easy way to do that is to just decrease the life to 10. We also want to change the time sampling to random still frame. Since these particles are not covered by our main text, we don't want to see them spinning around. We also don't want to to see these growing on. So under size over life, select the second preset and then under the opacity over life, open the curve editor and bring the first point down. So that way the particles fade in instead of growing on in a, in a weird wrong way. We can also duplicate that layer and change the random seed. Maybe pick another one of our textures so that the sprite texture doesn't look the same and turn the color fill up to about 95%. We can also turn off the velocity over life on these ones as well and then turn the velocity itself down as well to compensate. This is going to look like the paint of our text is chipping off and this looks especially good if you're using multicolored text or a colorful logo. We have the most colorful logo there is. Seriously. We also used a bevel alpha effect to make these look a, a little bit more 3D. A little bit, little bit more 3D. What's that from? Uh, the, the Iron Man nanotech tutorial. Oh, man. To add some extra glow to the main embers, we duplicate the main particle layer and move it up above the text erode layer, and then go through each of the systems and disable the shadowlets. You don't have to do that, but you'll get less glow if you don't, and maybe that's what you want. Let's apply an extract effect. Set the channel to red and cut out all of the darker colors, leaving us with only the fire. We can feather that out a bit too, and then we'll just set a keyframe on the black point and move forward until the particles are starting to go away. Goodbye. Bye, particles. And we'll just animate the black point until they disappear. Get out of here, particles. Next, we want a set matte effect. We'll take the matte from the text road layer and invert the matte. This is just so our glow can wrap around the layer instead of being behind it. We want a solid composite as well, turning the background to black. Next, we apply a glow effect and we just make a tight glow around the particles and then another glow effect. And this one can be a bigger or wider glow. Sometimes putting glows on reds and oranges doesn't really look so nice. So if you're not digging the colors, you can use our Create Heat Radiation plugin to remap them into being more realistic fire colors. That's what that plugin does. Mm -hmm. We're going to stick this in between the two glows. I really like Create Heat Radiation. Like at first I was like, it's good. But now I'm like, I use it pretty often. <laughs> first I was like, it's good. But it's now good. I'm like, it's good. It's, it's real good. And it's free. So y'all know. We can't repeat those exact steps again for the top layer of embers to add some glow to that as well if we want and then we are done. Nice. If you like effects that burn, make sure to check out last week's video where we showed off our new fire transition effects. These are cool. Oh, she doesn't want. And again, <laughs> if you're a pro member, which everyone in the world be because it's totally worth it, make sure to check the description of this video so you can download the project file right now. That's right. Hey, make it awesome. Yeah, make it awesome creators. And if you want to see more videos like this, let us know in the comments below. I'm pretty sure uh, last week someone told us to stop making fire videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh. <laughs> That's all we have planned for this year. <laughs> Later, creators. Later, creators.